All right, guys, welcome back to the evidence-based weight loss series. Here in part two, we're gonna talk about how did the obesity epidemic get started? One has to wonder, from 1980 to the current point, in the last not even 40, eh, about 40 years, more obesity has more than doubled worldwide since 1980, and that is according to the World Health Organization. So let's talk about that. Something obviously must have drastically changed in the world and in our culture for such a thing to happen. So let's first of all talk about what is obesity. So overweight is typically a BMI of 25 to 30. Now anything above 30 is considered obesity. 18.5 uh, to 24.9 BMI is considered in the normal range. Now one thing I do wanna keep in mind, I'm at right at about 25 BMI, 24.8, 24.9, 25, about a pound away of technically being overweight technically. Now, <clears throat> keep in mind, BMI is not the most accurate measurement for everybody. Now, if you're a sedentary person, it probably is a pretty accurate measurement, but it's not perfect. It's basically a height to weight ratio calculator. You can just Google BMI. You can put in your weight, you put in your height, and uh, it'll calculate it for you what your BMI is. I just did that a little bit ago. I'm pretty much about a pound overweight or so. Pretty much. I'm, 100, I'm about 173, 74 pounds. 173 pounds, I'm below. 174 pounds, I'm above. Yet, I have visible abs. So, to me, if somebody has visible abs, they are not overweight. So, let's just keep in mind, that's not always the most accurate measurement. Now, body fat, I'm looking up here, is 21 to 36% for women is considered a normal range, and 12 to 25% for men. Now, keep in mind, that stuff isn't always accurate either. I've had the thing... I've done, I have a BMI or no, a body fat thing at the gym. And one week it'd say I'm 13% and I was kind of sad. And then the next week it would say I'm 8% and I go, yeah, I'm 8% body fat. And then the next week it would say I'm like 12 or 13 again. So how is that possible? That's just bizarre, right? You gain like 5% body fat and lose percent and then gain it back in a week. That's crazy. So those aren't always the ac most accurate either. But let's talk about now how the obesity epidemic actually started. So it, in the 1960s is kind of what was bringing this on. We started to have mass production in our food, uh, kind of like the industrial revolution, revolution, but except it's being done in food now. Housewives in the 1960s were, I guess it was after the 1960s, because in the 1960s, housewives were cooking and cleaning and they spent hours every day. But now we got prep, Package and prepared processed foods. That is a multi-trillion dollar industry packaged food. So pretty much remember this. If something's packaged, it's not good for you. It's high in sodium, probably high in sodium and sugars and fat and cholesterol and all the other things that aren't good for you. So that has been a huge driver. If I had to pick a number one thing, in my personal opinion, packaged food is the number one reason for obesity today. So that started to go way up. So example, cigarette smoking, people used to do about one a week. And then eventually people doing 70, seven, started doing about an average of 70 cigarettes a week. Well, what happened? Well, mass production of cigarettes. Instead of having people roll by hand, you got a machine and it rolled it really fast and that drove down the price of cigarettes and that became really affordable. And then people got addicted to it. And of course we have this ongoing problem of smoking. Although people more, it's made more aware than ever before, probably the last 10 to 20 years that smoking is bad. And I believe that really has cut down on smoking risks. So kind of the same thing with smoking and food. They kind of went hand in hand. Once uh, you got this mass production and factorizing food into packages, making it quick, simple, easy, and cheap, then they're able to sell this cheaper. And then of course we buy it. Now, believe this or not, nothing should surprise us anymore, right? The U.S. government is making you fat. You heard that. The U.S. government is promoting obesity. I almost thought of, of actually having that the title of uh, this video. But I figured, you know what? It's important to understand that obesity is more than doubled worldwide. And I don't like getting into politics too much. But, so this is what they do. They subsidize things such as soybean oil and uh, cheap animal feeds. So then animal products we have, and then we had we used to have the dollar menu at McDonald's, and uh, that come from our tax dollars. You know, production of corn and soy and high fructose corn syrup, soybean oil, um, 
All the corn you see in the fields for miles upon miles, that isn't human corn. That stuff is for the animals. They feed them. This is cheap food. It's subsidized by the government. And then as a result, they make things like high fructose corn syrup. Animal production goes way up because they have cheap subsidized food and other processed foods go into this. So the government is promoting it. Why they do it? It's not entirely known. My guess is that somebody in the government, US government probably profits off of this. Why else would you be subsidizing it? It's probably a profit. But this stuff is really driving obesity rates up. Uh, we need to be subsidizing fruits and vegetables instead. Those things need to be cheaper. Uh, sugar is another big problem. So if uh, kids eat Fruit Loops versus Cheerios and they eat the same number of calories, the kid on average will eat 77% more Fruit Loops than they will Cheerios. That's page seven in How Not to Diet of Dr. Greer's book. Um, I know high fructose corn syrup started to come in the market on the 70s. Big surprise, the 80s is when the obesity rates started to go way up. It was about the 80s is when that started. Uh, high fructose corn syrup, I believe, is a big contributor to the obesity epidemic. That's in so many processed foods, cookies, cakes. It's in just about everything. Sodas. Um, the cost, the, so then eventually the cost of fresh fruit started to double. Page 25, Dr. Greger's book. Um, and so then people are buying less fruits and vegetables. Um, the servings of fruits and vegetables drop by, from 42% a day down to 26% a day. So people are eating less of those. Uh, and then most, more than half the con foods consumed by all adults in the U.S. are found to originate from subsidized foods. So why don't you take a guess here. What do you think the top four sources of calories are in the American diet? Give it a pause because I'm about to give the answer. See it, write it down. See if you're right. There are four main things that are the top sources of calories in the diet. All right, here we go. Number one. Uh, is refined grains. That's one of the highest sources of calories in the diets. Forgive me if the child is crying in the background. That's part of being a parent. It's hard to get away to a quiet place. So I, I'm, I, I apologize that this video is distracting. Number two is added fats. Uh, usually oils is where that's coming. Probably soybean oils, other kind of oils. Uh, number three is added meats. And then number four is added sugar. So those are the top foods in the American diet. If you ever watched the movie Fed Up, they blame sugar on the obesity epidemic. Well, yes, sugar is to blame, and they, they kind of demonized how we were putting lower fat foods in foods. And according to Dr. Greger, the, uh, both are the culprit. It's not just sugar, uh, it's sugar and fat. Uh, sugar up, sugar and the obesity epidemic, sugar went up 20%, and there's been a 36% in increase in fats mostly from oil. Things will say low fat. They started to go through the low fat craze, but you know what? People just made it up somewhere else and we added oil to so many things. Another big problem is massive advertisements. <clears throat> think about think about back when you were a kid. What uh, advertisements did you see on cartoon Saturday mornings? You probably saw the Fruit Loops crew commercial, that toucan guy, the Lucky guy from Lucky Charms, that cinnamon toast crunch guy, the guy that goes, I'm cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, woo! Of marketing on sugary and processed foods. M tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars spent. McDonald's spends a billion dollars a year on advertisement. ba da ba 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 I mean, we know these things, right? You all know, I'm sure 99% of you know what I meant when I said ba da ba 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 That's an advertisement for McDonald's. Uh, it's everywhere. It's on our phones. It's on our ads. There's in these. Uh, luckily, this vi luckily this video doesn't have ads on it because we're not a popular channel. But there's commercials. I mean, ads are everywhere. They're on our phones. They're in our emails. We get we're bombarded by ads. It's kind of annoying. Um, manipulation of pseudoscience. Example: Coca-Cola might get on some kind of uh, board of nutrition. They'll often sponsor the American Academy of Family physicians and they've accepted millions from coca-cola so manipulation of actual science that's why there's so much confusion around it should we follow a high carb diet should we follow fat high fat diet should we follow this diet the atkins diet the keto diet oh man there's so much confusion around food well let me spoil alert for this whole series just eat real food okay that's the main message of this whole series uh there, but there's so much you got coca-cola getting their hands in tax cigarettes 
I believe that's what we need to do with processed foods. We need to tax that, and we need to make we need to subsidize fruits and vegetables and other good foods. Um, if pe people say that if fruits and vegetables were cheaper, they'd buy more of them. Also, pineapple is normally three dollars where I shop at at Whole Foods. I saw it on sale for a dollar eighty, nearly half the price. Instead of buying one or two for the week, I bought six for the week. I think if it's still on sale next week, I might buy 10 of them. It, it's true, if things are cheaper, people will buy more of them. So here's another issue that's caused the obesity epidemic that you may not be as much aware of. We got um, obesogenic chemicals. Infants two years old are now more than ever before um, exposed to all these chemicals. Uh, organic organitons, page 110, um, it activates PPARY. It recruits connective tissues to stem cells and turns into fat cells. Um, we start out with fat cells and we gain more later in life, but it may be easier to put on the pounds or harder to lose them and more difficult to maintain weight loss. So we are exposed from these chemicals, organitons. I'll put it on the screen so you know what it says. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, this, this chemical now is banned today, but it's left over. It's kind of like arsenic. That's a pretty deadly pesticide, but that's, um, that's still left over, even though it's been banned many years ago. It gets in our rice still. Um, thank God that this thing is banned, but it's, uh, it's, it's still there and it causes uh, obesity. Uh, halibut, swordfish, tuna, those are the worst offenders. Uh, DDT was another one that's found mostly in me, uh, fish. Uh, BPA, six billions of pounds of BPA is made each year. It comes from, if you put it, um, a PPA, BPA in a petri dish, it's, it's shown to accelerate the formation of new fat cells and increase fat formation within the fat cells. People with the highest BPA levels had a 67% greater odds of obesity compared to people with the lowest levels, page 112 of Dr. Ritter's book. Avoiding processed foods, canned foods, BPA can drop 76% within three days. Um, avoid canned soups if you can. They can have a 1,000% rise in BPA in the urine compared to people eating fresh soup. Uh, sliced turkey is also um, the only source of fresh foods with BPA. Um, we got phylates. Those are in animal products such as meat, dairy, and eggs, page 113. Uh, if you go three months without eggs and meat and poultry and fish, you can have significant drops in mercury, cadmium, and lead. Uh, these are, again, these are all contributing to the obesity epidemic. Uh, these compounds can get trapped in our body fat, affect our metabolism, slow down the rate at which we burn calories. So avoid animal products and you can reduce the accumulation of these pollutants and these chemicals that are contributing to obesity. Another big thing we have now is a uh, leptin resistant. So the hypo hypothalamus, I'll have that up here in case I said that wrong. That's an area of the brain. When we start to get hot, we sweat. If we get cold, we shiver. That area of the brain gets activated. That area of the brain also <laughs> activates leptin is our uh, leptin hormone. That is the hunger hormone that tells us if we've had enough and if we've been if we've been satisfied or not. And so it controls our appetite so that we can eat the right amount, uh, leptin, that's in the hypothalamus area of the brain. If a child weighs more than 100 pounds at age four, they probably have some kind of leptin deficiency. And so you inject these children with leptin and then their weight comes off. So obesity is thought to be caught by leptin resistance, similar to insulin resistance when the body has more than enough insulin. Now, if you feed animals saturated fat, within hours, it will cross the blood-brain barrier, accumulating in the hypothalamus of the brain, causing inflammation and then leptin resistance, and then these rats will overfeed and eat. Now, I don't think there are any studies done on this on humans, but it could probably be assumed that too much saturated in the fat in the diet will cause this inflammation in the brain, screw up our leptin resistance, or screw up our leptin hormone, our hunger and satiating hormone, and I believe that is a cause of obesity. Of course, it's low in fiber, too much fats, too much sugar. Um, from the 1970s, a cheeseburger used to weigh 5.8 ounces. Today, it is about 7.3 ounces. Salty snacks went from 1 ounce to 1.6 ounces currently. The average soda consumption used to be 13 ounces. It is currently 20 ounces. We have increased portion sizes at restaurants. Um, we eat all day long. We'll eat from sunrise to sunset. 
and even later into the night at midnight. So these are the many reasons why. Anyways guys, there are many reasons why. The take home message is that the government's kind of promoted this through their subsidies. We have more food. We're eating too much. There's uh, We have chemicals in, the, in our bodies that are screwing up our hormones. We got leptin resistance. It's many reasons why. I don't think it's one single one. Dr. Grader doesn't seem to believe that um, lack of exercise is one. I think there is. I remember just playing video games for hours and hours in the kids. I don't think it's one single reason for this to more than double across the entire world. I think it's a multiple amount of things that have caused this epidemic. Lack of exercise, the, the subsidized, not enough fruits and vegetables, not enough fiber, too much sugar, too much fat, too much oils, too much processed foods, too much packaged foods. It's not one single cause. Soda manipulating the nutrition science. Anyways, guys, stay tuned for next week. I think part three, all right, this is going to be my number one weight loss tip is going to be next week and uh, part three, actually two weeks from today. That's going to be talking about energy density. I'm trying to actually bust out the good stuff first because I'm afraid with this being a 20 part series that people may actually get bored of this. So I want to give my best advice first. But I guess if people quit, that's kind of their fault. Then they don't really want to lose weight. But anyways, that's how I have the outline. Um, say hi to YouTube, Dasa. Say hi to YouTube. All right, thank you guys so much for watching this. Please share this with people. Show them how the obesity epidemic started. We can end this epidemic if people are willing to make changes and realize what the problems are. We can drastically reduce this disease and live happier and healthier lives. We will see you guys in two weeks. Bye-bye.